Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our special fireside chat on the next normal, the power of creativity and technology. It's um, part of our webinar series organized by Terragon to help businesses um, stay winning in these unprecedented times, especially as a result of the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. So I'll just quickly take us through the organizers of the fireside charts. Paragon is a data and marketing technology company focused on Africa. Um, we help brands to intelligent, intelligently connect with their customers, brands focused on Africa. Our DNA is mobile data technology and Africa. We are located in five um, in four countries, and we have over 100 experts that help brands to intelligently connect with their customers. Just as I said, we also we aggregate and enrich difficult to source consumer data. We generate measurable in, um, outcomes for our clients. So these are some of the brands that we've worked with in the past. We've helped to um, achieve great results for them. So summarily, we enable supercharged connections between brands and consumers. So Terragon is the host of this event. And um, as I said earlier, it's a part of the webinar series that um, has been on for the last two months. So at the end of this session, it's expected that our participants will have an understanding of the next normal and implications for businesses. It's also expected that you have a clear understanding of the average consumer of the next normal. You want to know what his traits are, what his habits are, especially in an era where um, consumer behavior is changing rapidly. Also, you'll be able to get strategies to maximize costs, to increase your um, business ROI and stay winning in the next normal. You'll also learn how to win with advertising in the data-driven world. And all this will be around the power of creativity and technology as we speedily approach the next normal. So I'll take you to our guests now. Um, our first guest, Steve Babaiko, is the CEO and founder of Extreme Ideas. Extreme Ideas is one of Nigeria's leading advertising agency and with offices in um, Lusaka and Johannesburg. Steve began his advertising career at MC&A Saatchi and & Saatchi and later moved to Prima Garnet Ogilvy and then to 141 Worldwide, now Nitro 121, where he was creative director. At 141, Steve did a lot of great work that made the agency trend for many years. He has over 23 years worth of experience in Africa's creative space and is renowned for creating some of the most iconic marketing campaigns on the continent. So if you know the um, Proudly Nigerian campaign by British American Tobacco, um, Etisalat, Now You're Talking, and then Diamond Banks, You Need a New Bank campaign, then you know that Steve Babaiko is the, the brain behind those campaigns. Also on the global stage, Steve has been representing Africa very well. He's been a member of the jury at the New York Advertising Week, the Loris and Crystal Awards. He was also been a speaker at the Cannes Festival of Creativity. Last year, he was listed in Adweek as one of the world's top 100 creatives. Steve is also the current vice president of the Association of Advertising Agencies of Nigeria, AAAN. Elo Mer is our second guest. He is an entrepreneur who has worked in mobile and digital media on the African continent for over 15 years. Uh, he has gained valuable experience in different countries in Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Cote d'Ivoire, Uganda, and was also a part of the founding team that grew a mobile technology startup and took it public in Nigeria. Elo has consulted widely for various organizations in the telecom and banking sectors, including World Bank, the International Finance Corporation on Development of Rural Telephone Initiatives, Mobile Payments in West Africa and deployment of many new products. Elo is the founder of Terragon, the host of this event. And he's also very passionate about um, leveraging the unique ways Africans can use mobile devices to intelligently connect brands to their customers. Elo is very big on 
intelligent connections with brands and their customers. He holds a global executive MBA from IESC Business School. Here he graduated as the best student of his class and made the school's 40 under 40 entrepreneur list in 2017. He's been in founding and leadership roles with the Mobile Marketing Association Nigeria and the Internet Advertising Bureau West Africa. So, as I said earlier, this is a fireside chat and it's going to be between Elo and Steve. So, I'm going to hand over to Elo now to um, continue the rest of the event. Good morning, and thank you very much, Vincent, for the warm introductions. Um, Steve, good morning. Thank you for morning. accepting the invitation. Good morning, Elo. Um, How are you, man? I'm well, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so, good morning, everybody who is on the webinar, on this virtual webinar. Um, thank you very much for finding time to be with us this morning. Um, today, my guest is somebody who I respect a lot, somebody I've learned a lot from. Um, in one of my um, introductions of him, I said he's an aficionado, somebody who has <laughs> unlimited knowledge of um, advertising in Nigeria, West Africa, Africa, and the globe. Um, Steve is also somebody who is very, very passionate about technology. Um, I have been attending the Mobile World Congress for the last, since Terragon was founded, and I think that I have always had dinners with Steve at each of those um, at the Mobile Absolutely. World Congress. And I wonder how Absolutely. is a creative mind always at these, um, at these conferences? Um, before we even go to that, um, Steve went to, attended university at uh, Amadou Bello University in Zaria. He is from the middle belt in Nigeria, Kogi State. Um, he has built his professional competence in the South. So he's a well-rounded Nigerian who understands the different elements of culture. And that is a big input into creativity and telling stories. So we would like to hear a lot um, as this, you know, we all know about the shock that has um, happened globally over the last three months. And people are wondering, what is the next thing? How will things evolve from here? And um, we wanted to, we thought that everybody's talking about digitalization. Everybody's talking about the power of technology. However, we know that the traditional elements of how things are done, stories will continue to remain stories. Stories yeah. will be a big element of that. So how do you gain people's attention? Um, screens are now, people, one person has five, three, four, five, six screens. Um, well, how can we leverage um, storytelling and the, the democratization of technology in this newfound or accelerated move into digitalization and the use of technology um, to, to, to gain people's attention? Um, so that is, that is one way, that is, a perspective we would like to hear a lot from, from, from Steve about how he thinks about it. And I will maybe chip in a few things here and there about how we are thinking about it as well at Terragon and maybe um, from a technology perspective globally. Um, so Steve. Hi, Elo. Yeah, do you have any opening remarks um, before I get it? I try to take a start by the first. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much, Elo. You are so kind. You are so generous with your introduction as well. So <laughs> I, at some point I was wondering, is it me, Elo, is describing or someone else? I was actually looking behind me. You know, thank you so much for your generosity and your kindness. I mean, the thing is, awesome. for me is, uh, I've always seen as a as a young creative, and as I got into, uh, I've always seen that storytelling is always going to be part of the core essence of who we are as creatives. And then, as I as I continue to advance my career, and the, with the emergence of tech, I now realize that. I think at some point, maybe about eight, nine years ago, I told some people that in the future of creativity is going to be driven by engineering. I, I, I remember telling some of my colleagues then, and I, I think for some of them, they didn't get it. There's a lot of tech input into our storytelling ability now that now gives creativity more bigger wings to fly. So, I, I mean, I, and what, what COVID-19 has done is just to basically bring forward all of those things we used to say, oh, this is the future, it's going to happen in the future, in the nearest future. COVID-19 just went and just zoomed everything and back forward and backdated everything. So we are having to deal with some of the things we thought we were going to be dealing with in another three, four, five years time today. So I'm really, really excited about this conversation and 
how to 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 just shed more light on the topic. Fantastic, Steve. Thank you very much for that insight. Um, yeah. So, so we 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 are seeing an obvious. Um, there's an obvious trend um, that is currently going on. Um, I haven't been to the office in about eleven weeks. I think you would um, share similar timelines. Sure. And um, and what that the impact of that? When you go out nowadays, it's a rarity to find traffic on the road. Um, <laughs> so there's a shift in customer interaction. Um, our day-to-day -day life has changed forever. How would brands um, in, the, in Nigeria, in Africa, how, um, how would they find new ways of engaging? Um, I've, I've had several phone calls from out-of-home vendors. Um, that's outdoor media. Um, yes. You know, now, billboards, we're a very strong platform. What are you, what is the, what, are, what, are the, what, what kind of innovation um, with the changes in, in customer interaction in the way we live, in the way we consume media? Hello, hello. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Steve, can you hear me? Yes, I lost you for a few seconds, but I think you're back here. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. So I was just yeah. asking the question around, with the change in customer interaction, how... Yes. Um, could, how can brands start to leverage these changes? How can brands engage more intelligently? How can the power of storytelling be adjusted if it needs to be adjusted? How can it be distributed more effectively? What kind of insights can you share with us? Well, I mean, thank you so much. I mean, if you look at, let's even, let's even roll back the dice a little bit to the beginning of the pandemic. What it basically deal, the, the blow it dealt the brands is similar or is different, slightly different from the blow it dealt to the consumer. So we are all battling with different issues within our space. For the for the brands and the and the brand owners, first it just crippled and dis, and just dislocated the supply chain and the distribution chain. So if you are, if you are used to getting raw material from the north, with those in, with interstate lockdown, how are you getting your raw materials? And it's worse if you're getting your input raw materials from imported. The borders are closed. The, 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 everywhere is closed. So it, that that first happened. And secondly, if you are used to moving your stuff from home to move to Okiali for major distributors to now uh, distribute to maybe small smaller dist wholesale distributors and then to retailers, that distribution chain is already crippled. So you see, all of a sudden, we found ourselves in no man's land, up the creek without a paddle, like some people will say. And then for the consumers, you are used to being able to wake up in the morning, plan your day, oh, I'm going to go home. And you're going to work. Uh, there's this thing they call drive time on radio. You switch on your radio, and you're listening to brand messages. And then you come back late in the evening. And then there's also the, <laughs> the prime time for you on TV. All of that is gone out of the window. So basically, it's, we were all just crumbling. We found ourselves in a new territory, uncharted waters, and it was very difficult. But I mean, like I've had cause to speak uh, at different for, forum with uh, uh, on similar topic to say, look, if you look at the out of home industry, again, they got dealt a very big blow as well because all of a sudden in February, the value you were getting for the out of home board you put on third mainland is zero in March and April because nobody could go out. I mean, it's when you go out that you can see the out of home uh, message that is there. So it, it's become really, really difficult. Now what brands quickly now did was to pivot a little bit. And now uh, for some of the, the guys who are like maybe uh, the juniors of this world and all of those other guys who are into that uh, space and they, 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 they've been groaning and not doing so well, all of a sudden that space became more important because you had to do online distribution and all of the online stores and, and, and markets became a veritable place for cl clients to move their product to, for consumers to be able to now order. If we say, I can't go out, then maybe I can go on Jumia or any of all of those online stores to order stuff that I want. So, and in terms of the messaging, it became very more important now to move your messaging to where the consumers can see. So, because what the, what the clients are forever looking for are eyeballs, just eyeballs to see the messaging that we have carefully crafted for the consumers. So, 
if online is not going to work, if uh, out of home is not going to work, online became the place where you, you drop your messages. So you saw that with all of the brand influencers, they had more work to do. They had more brands now talking to them. Some of those guys are sitting on three, four million uh, followers on Instagram, for instance. TikTok became very heavy. People just were looking for ways to just get uh, <laughs> their op opportunity to see. I actually had a client of mine that I collaborated with. I mean, I'm stuck at home with my family. We weren't going anywhere. Uh, Pick chocolate, pick cho pick chocolate brand uh, had to launch. And then he said, look, why not? I mean, we can shoot a commercial for this line, commercial in code now. Um, luckily for me, my wife had gone to a New York Film Academy uh, about two summers ago. So she had learned uh, camera work and editing. We sat here in my house with my kids and we knocked this thing off and we supported the client by putting it online. And it's actually, I, I, I saw the engagement online and I was very impressed. So those are the new ways that consumers and, and, and the clients and brand owners are beginning to 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 use to get uh, interaction and mileage with being able to push their messages to the to the consumers i don't know if that answers your question a little bit it does it does it does steve and i think that the anecdote um around your family and peak is one that we can ride on a bit more Yes. Um, so you talk about um, lockdown, no shooting of commercials at all. Out of home, um, peak time is no longer peak time because it's now no. around the clock. Yes. So when you think about it, you 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 know that's innovation right there. You Absolutely. Put your family together. Peak chocolate is a family drink. It resonates. So are we now saying that? Storytelling, media, and all that is now decentralized. Anybody who has a following that fits to a target audience can potentially be both um, a story can be crafted around that person. That that person can be a distribution outlet. That as far as that person is online and connected, is that absolutely is that absolutely. To? Absolutely, Elu. You know, and since the advent of digital and since where uh, cameras now have now become part of uh, this device called a, a handphone, yes. I mean, there has been democratization of storytelling. So there's usually it used to be, oh, uh, there's this production house somewhere, they are the experts, and there, there will still continue to be room for all of those kind of high-end production that needs those experts. But we're yes. just saying that now, Storytelling is not the exclusivity of any set of people. Anybody with a handheld phone can tell the story. And I'll give you another anecdote. When, in, with all of the lockdown, George Floyd got killed. Some passerbys who were witness to a crime took their cell phone, recorded the story, and they put it out. And that has changed the entire narration now. Normally before, it would take forever for such policemen, policemen to get charged. But because yeah. that's it now instigated, and look at it, it's become like a global wildfire now, taking the whole world Absolutely. by storm. There are protests in the UK, in, 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 in Paris, in, in, in America, in almost all the 50 states in America. You, you see, that, that's the power of the storytelling. That story, that about that clip, that short clip, video clip, was so compelling that even the most hardened of racists had to sit up and say, well, I'm, I'm not sure this is right. You know, that, that's what we're talking about here. Fantastic, fantastic. Thanks very much for that. Thanks very much for yeah. that. So, yeah. um, everybody seems to be uh, maybe in a guess game um, of what is next, what is the next normal. And we have aptly titled this, um, you know, the next normal, this, this webinar. Um, you know, so from a business perspective, you know, I'm not saying you should uh, um, essentially say, you, you, I'm not saying you should become a magician. <laughs> yeah, sure. um, but, you know, somehow, as they say, they say it, it's really your experience kind of like um, fuels your gut. And most times you come out with, you know, very, very strong, um, very, very strong projections of what could potentially happen. What are yeah. you seeing? What is your opinion of how things will look? Six months, well, 12 months down the line. 
Well, the, the thing is that there's this saying that the only thing certain about life is that it, it moves on, okay? So there's always going to be change. Even, even right now, if you see how we have dealt with psychologically with the whole COVID-19 and the whole lockdown, you see that at various times, we had our emotional state kept, kept on evolving and changing. I, I, and I'll say to, my, to the best of my mind, when the thing happened and they say, oh, let's shut down. I'm sure if you ask your staff and if the people who, my colleagues, there were no shortage of the people who went, yay, at least I, I get to have two weeks to rest. The Wahala of Lagos and the traffic, let me just go and chill and rest a bit. That was the reaction the first two weeks. Now, in the, after that first two weeks, when you realize that ah, you're eating four times in a day, your children are eating six times in a day, the food is getting consumed faster, now you have to spend more money to replenish and go to the store. You couldn't even go. It's, it's even wahala to go and get the food. And, and it looks like, so you start to say, wait a minute, is this chilling idea such a great idea? By the time we got to April, and when it looks like for some companies, they are already talking about salary cuts. For some people, they are saying they are not going to pay salary. Then your heart starts to skip a bit. And meanwhile, the eating continues at home. <laughs> then you are not sure what to, to do again. At some point, you begin to feel scared. By the time we now go to the end of April and it looked like some people didn't get salary, now you are begging the government, please, this hunger can kill us faster than COVID-19. So you can see the evolution of how we've been changing. It's the same thing that businesses are going through. Now, in the first few weeks, it looks like the whole heaven had collapsed. Our distribution chain is gone. Our supply chain is obliterated. What do we do? Now they begin to find a way around being able to make one or two things happen. Zoom became like a thing, powerful thing that we can use to meet each other. So you see all of those things evolving. Now it's become obvious that, look, you know what? This virus is probably not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So it is only the most stupid of persons that will now fold their hands and say, okay, look, well, until this thing is solved, we are not going to move. Because we know that if we don't move, we are all going to die anyway. So now people are getting more creative. Now you see a lot of ingenuity coming in to say, Oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a client partnering with uh, their agencies to shoot a homemade commercial to help us fill the gap before we're able to shoot that blockbuster that we need to do. Are we thinking of moving uh, our distribution to online platforms? So a lot of all of that will happen. But what, you, what I suspect is going to happen is that the role of tech in, in going forward will become more crucial. And why do I say this? There are things that we've done normally, but we've not really flexed that, that muscle enough for it to build up. And why am I saying this? If you see people like me, yes, you see that I have the potential. If I really work out a lot, I can develop six plus no, Because I'm not working out, I'm not flexing the muscle around my tummy enough. That six pack is one part now. But say I get a good trainer and it takes me to the gym and works me day in, day out for the next six months to one year. You see that all of a sudden, I'm proudly displaying my shirt on the beach because the six packs is beginning to show. What I'm saying is that in the, in the nearest future, we are going to be forced to flex the muscle of technology. Things like geolocation marketing are things that we've already paid, you just usually pay lip service to around here. It's been happening a lot more outside there. It's going to take more prominence because if people, we don't know whether they are, this thing will be something that will happen again. Maybe it triggers and the rate of infection goes up in the future and we have to go do another lockdown again. If it happens, people who already have perfected the art of geolocation marketing have it better chances of being able to win this war. So what I see is that more and more will be forced to tap into technology and all of the advantages it provides to us. Fantastic. Um, thank you very much, Steve. Thanks very much for that insight. Um, um, to the audience, please, if you have any questions um, on the top, well, on my screen, it's on the top right corner, um, you see a tab, Q and A. You can type in your questions there, and I would be referring to that tab um, to take questions um, intermittently. Um, Steve, before we lose track, um, you talk about flexing the muscles of technology, yeah. which I think is... Um, which I think is very apt. Um, they said, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. Absolutely. And, yeah, and that is, that is really what you have. Um, you have both um, been 
taking the lead in this area. I, I, when, I, when, when we catch up in Barcelona, I always wonder, why is Steve always coming to Barcelona? But it's in times <laughs> like this that the answers <laughs> are very, very clear. The answers yeah. are very, very clear. This, the necessity has now arrived. And so that invention, a brand that is thinking about, I have never really paid attention to technology. I have paid lip service to technology. Technology or digital is just something I have to put in there because everybody says it should be in there. It should be in my marketing mix. What would you say, what steps, three steps should they take to fuse their current marketing mix with technology? You know, very, very raw thoughts. Well, I'll say, to be honest, there's no, any brand that does not want to pay attention to technology today in 2020 is doing so at its own peril. Because you don't know, today it is about COVID-19. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow that will keep <laughs> all of us locked in the house again. So you, you never really know. The world is becoming way more connected and integrated for you not to, to bother about it. So I think the first step is just, is just retooling. You know, there are so, and that's why at Extreme, the only thing I hate is when anybody comes and tells me, oh, that's how we used to do it. I don't, that's the thing I hate to hear. I don't tell me how we used to do it. There's always a new and more interesting and better way, a more efficient way to do things. So I, if, I, if, I, if I'm trying to interview you for a job and you're telling me the story of what you did in 1994, I'm not interested. So I think it's retooling. One, the gatekeepers of industries must understand that there is need for technology. I pity some of those CEOs now who are not like tech savvy how are they going to con conduct? And you think this Zoom meeting that we're doing now is easy. Just wait until you give it to the guy who doesn't even have a clue what button to press and how to make tech work for him or her. It becomes a challenge. So it means at that leadership level, we must force retool, especially for the guys who are disconnected and all of the guys who are technophobes who really, who get scared when they hear anything technology. So we must force retool at that level. And secondly, in terms of our own uh, procedure and, and operation. We must update operations and procedure. So it means that if you are doing your distribution chain mapping, there is no way you are going to remove digital from that space because if you do so, you are shortening yourself. Now, I, from what everything I'm reading, Jumia seems to have been to be doing well again, and the <laughs> business is good for them now. You couldn't say the same thing three, four months ago. So it means that that channel is becoming really, really heavy. It means you have to find a way to play and play effectively there. And, and even thirdly, now for the troops. So it's going to be a three-tiered layer kind of operation. Take it from the leadership, take it for your operation and infrastructure, and take it from the rest of the troop, your colleagues, people who work. How do you make them think different? Because automatically the way we were conditioned to think before COVID-19 is all about brick and mortar, all of the things we can do in normal trade and channel and all that touch points. And but, well, those ones are good. We know that we have mastered that, but how do we now overlay digital in all of this to keep us up to date? I think if we take it at that three tier and we, and we, and we do it very well, uh, we can begin to see a uh, difference in our operations. Great, great. Um, we can lose sight of um, the, key, um, the key target in all of this. Mm. Mm. Um, the key target is the consumer, you and I. Yeah. And um, the last three months has presented us with very, very um, significant challenges. And that we yield new traits, that we yield a different set of habits, that we yield the output of that will be behaviors that sure. we have never really seen before. Um, how are you positioning your thinking around addressing a creative message to this new type of consumer with it in this well, next normal? The, the, the thing is that the next normal still, whatever happens in the next normal, you are still going to be dealing with human beings. In human beings, we, we evolve and change once in, in, in certain aspects of our habit, but in the, at, the, at the core of our being is just that human we, we, we can feel, 
we have emotion, you have something you can connect with. And at the end of the day, it's just well, no matter where our psychological frame of mind is at any point in time, there is still that, that part of us that needs connection. So whether it's new normal or old normal, what will be central to what brands must continue to do is find, forging some kind of psychological and emotional bond with the consumer. That, let's just establish that from the start. But having said that, you will realize that now the consumer you are dealing with is different from the consumer of 1975. Detergents in 75 or around 80s, in the 80s, when I used to watch uh, New Masquerade, uh, my, my dad was in the army. We lived in Oweri. Uh, so I used to follow him to the sergeant mess and watch New Masquerade. It was a big thing in my house. So when we go there, we watch, and I, and I see all of those uh, commercials about detergents. To tell you how they used to look down on the consumer, they would tell you, uh, take a scoop of detergent in your hand, put it in a bowl, then shake it very well so that the leather, leather can <laughs> as if the consumer, <laughs> as if the consumer is such a moron, you can't figure that out. You know what I mean? So yeah. when you find out about the consumer today, that the consumer of today is way more informed. Sometimes, if you are not careful, your brand new phone, brand of phone just came out. This guy has gone online, he has done all the reviews, he's gone on YouTube, he's so if you are telling him anything that does not add up, he's already looking at you and saying, this one is, they are not serious. He, they are very informed. They are tech savvy. You see, they are, they are ahead of the technological curve that the, the brand, before the brand owner and all of the conservatism that rule some of them sometimes, before they get there, the consumer is already there. So, okay. And also they genuinely care. Some of the, a lot of them genuinely care about issues of climate change, about issues of value. You see that recently, they were talking about, oh, they want to use certain amounts to renovate the house of uh, whatever, the, the, the legislative arm of government. You can follow it on Twitter and see the outcry that has been following that announcement and see them, see consumers, normal consumers like you and I, analyzing how much budget has been allocated to the health of Nigeria compared to what you want to use to renovate an existing building. So these guys know what they are doing. So you can't pull wool over themselves. And Absolutely. most importantly, they also know the brands that care about the issues they care about and the ones that don't. So today, the best way to connect with this is just find a way to be part of their conversation because you can't control their conversation. I tell, what I tell my clients all the time is that just search for your brand on Twitter. As we're speaking right now, consumers are having conversation about all kinds of brands on Twitter today. You cannot stop them. You cannot gag them. You cannot control them. But you can find a way to be, to cleverly be part of that conversation and redirect the conversation and put it in a, in a, through a channel that you want to be seen from your own prison. That's the best you can do. So I think having said that, it is that all clients must find a way to find a much more uh, stronger bond with the, with the consumers. And that's what's going to be the new normal going forward. Great, 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 great. Um, see, this is going to be a bit of a, an interesting um, question. And it, it writes from what you just said. You talk about humans. Yes. And humans being um, um, emotional beings. Absolutely. And connecting to that bond. Mm -hmm. Right? And mm -hmm. then, there's, on the flip side of that, when we talk about um, power of creativity and technology, Yes. You know, some people talk about technology will take over what humans are doing, blah, 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 right? Yes. There's, that, there's that whole argument. Mm -hmm. But technology in of itself has zero emotions. It's really what the human tells mm -hmm. technology to do. That's what techno that's the output technology brings up. Absolutely. Right? So, are we then saying that an element of creativity, right, or pow the power of storytelling somehow could potentially be fused into that process could potentially be fused with technology and mm -hmm. maybe to be to reach the consumer in this next wave would require the power of creative minds to harness technology as well are you is that is that what you are doing to because it's not very clear you know okay what i can tell you uh, Elo, technology yes. will come technology will go okay 
Fantastic. Uh, mm-hmm. Media space, new, old media will become, or new media will become old media, and then another Absolutely. new media will come. But Absolutely. the only thing that will remain forever is the power of storytelling and the power Absolutely. of the humans to be creative and the power of the human beings to be able to connect to a creative story Absolutely. and that power of emotional to- telling. There is no way. What, what I described, I mean, all the guys who are screaming that, oh, technology is going to replace humans, it's not going to happen. Because what you see in that, the guys who are even inventing these technologies are human beings in the first place. And most of the, event, all of the inventions drive from certain emotional um, energy that they have. And it is that connection that even drives it. What I always tell people is that technology, as far as I know, is going to, it's what I describe as, the effect on, on creativity is what I describe as, is going to give, is what I describe as the missile concept. You know, if you want to launch a missile, you saw that uh, uh, they launched one uh, rocket into yeah. to, to go to space. Yeah, mm-hmm. Elon Musk and his people, they, they did that, mm-hmm. you know. And you see, what happens when you launch a missile like that, I'm not such an expert, but I can tell you, is that mm-hmm. it fires, once you, once, once, once you fire it off, it gets to a certain place into the stratosphere, okay? That mm-hmm. energy of the firing takes it to that, a certain place, and then it will have to launch another part of, of the, the missile that now goes straight and goes even further. That yeah. part of the missile that comes out last is what I call the power of technology. What we do as human beings and being creative is that initial launch. But if you yeah. now add technology on top of that thing to make the story even go further and yeah. connect even more, more interestingly, that is what technology is going to do for creativity. So uh, if you look at, let, let me give you an example of uh, when, when these days you hear people create algorithms. Yes. I always tell people, if we're not careful enough in this part of the world, People will create algorithms from, from China that will lock us out of the global world if we're not careful. And let, how, if, the, if you hear a story about, oh, Russia interfered in the U.S. election, from all of the researches I've done, basically some people created certain algorithm based on human behavior and human emotion to say, okay, look, if I want to create a division between black voters and white voters, what do I do? I create content that will make the black voters be more angrier at the white voters. In fact, I will pretend to be a white supremacist, create certain algorithm that will be following certain content. Because every time we go online and we search and we view one thing, our pattern and our behavior, all the things that are interest us are being recorded. And that's why they say, oh, we create cookies to make sure you, you see, you check one ad on Facebook, you come to Instagram, Immediately, Instagram begins to show you the same ad that you just checked on Facebook. They know. <laughs> so you understand. So it's the power of technology. Let us just know that technology is just help here to help accentuate whatever our mind can create as human beings and be- make it bigger and make it better. But technology will never replace us. Um, Steve, I completely am a technology guy who is trying to create <laughs> exciting things. And I com- I. 100% agree with you. Um, mm. You've essentially said technology is a turbocharger. Yeah. At, the heart, at the heart of it, the foundation still remains what humans can do. We have a few questions. And please continue to, bring, um, continue to send your questions in. Um, I will take um, one of the questions now. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I think we've kind of like spoken about this already. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it says, at Steve, how do you think creative agencies can use technology to achieve better results these times in advertising? This is, I've just taken the question literally. Um, okay. So start, Steve, that's to you. Yeah, please. Well, I mean, thank you so much. It's a very interesting question. And it's what, as the vice president of the AAA, and I, I always try and encourage my, my colleagues, charity begins at home. You see, because what you find out is that for most agencies in Nigeria today, quite a, a number, I won't say most, quite a large number, they don't, they still haven't gotten into that groove of saying, look, you know what, we live in a different world now. If you still want to do the things you used to do like 15, 10 years, you're already late to the party. So technology becomes a veritable tool. And how do you even begin to take it from the lowest hanging fruit? Because normally when people talk about digital, the first thing they say is social media. Social media is just like a spit in the ocean in the whole digital universe, right? 
But let's start from there. That is the low, lowest hanging fruit. How many agencies have digital footprints starting with their social media presence? So sometimes when you see me, I'm active on social media, I really want to do stuff. It looks like, oh, we don't even understand what Steve is doing. I'm, I'm, I'm getting used to the tools. I've seen the power of what this thing can do. I know what, I, even from in my own little space, I know how to engage my followers. What do they like? What don't they like? I know because at the back end, I can see all my statistics and I follow them with, with so much passion now because I just want to see which, which, which area of town, which country am I making new friends? Am I having new followers? I have all of those back end. So for us to be able to move forward as an industry, we must connect with technology. That's why when Elo said something about me always going to, to Barcelona for the, uh, for the mobile Congress, I used to work in an agency before I set up Extreme, and what and there I just realized that was the first time I heard about the GSM Mobile Congress in Barcelona. It happens usually February, March every year, and I realized that of all of the agencies working on telco account, then I, I I actually did my investigation. Nobody ever goes to the GSM Mobile Congress, and I I I'm, I start to be corrected even till now. It is only Extreme that goes every year. We, we already paid for this year. We got refunded, by the way, you know, because it was cancelled. And I always ask myself then that why? I mean, this, this doesn't make sense. If GSM Mobile Congress is where the future of telephony and tech is being discussed, and the clients always year in, year out, they go for this conference, but the agencies don't think it's worth investing on. So if the client comes back, are you going to sit them down to start to download everything they just learned? And so you are forever behind the clients in terms of where the future of, of, of uh, GSM <laughs> of mobile is going. So I found that, look, the moment I set up my agency, I will always be there. So I'm, I'm always part of it. And that is one area I say agencies have to like be able to, how, how do you up, upgrade? How do you up to your staff? I go sometimes with some of my colleagues and we just learn just for them to see Mark Zuckerberg is there almost every year. He comes to talk. He's telling you about what they are doing in their partnerships with mobile phone companies across the world. So basically, from our operation, from our day to day, and now thank God for like stuff like Zoom that has become like part of our daily life now. I told my team, never again are we going to have any face-to-face -face meeting in that office again. Never, unless it's an emergency that we can't help. If not, see if. If I'm here now, my video is not on. If I have an email to respond to a client or just to respond quickly, while I'm doing this, I can still multitask by saying, uh, yes, I'll get back to you shortly. I can send that. Instead of me waiting for one hour after this conversation is over before responding. So I'm saving time. Our operation is more effective. Look at all of the tools. Is there any tool from SAP, from anywhere else that we can use to make our operation better. And most importantly, I'm going to close on this particular question is, we must find a way, and this goes to uh, ELO and Terragon Group, we must find a way to localize, localize some of the big uh, tech tools that we use for our operation. I'll give an example. Stuff like being able to just gather data, research about uh, campaigns and how they are connecting with people, you, you, you have to use tools like MediaStar and all of those other stuff that will help you and do the, all of the, your campaign analysis. We're going to a place where, God forbid, if this economy goes into recession, how many agencies will be able to afford to pay for sus subscription of those tools? But here we have technological, technology companies that can afford to look and say, okay, look, how do we make a Nigerian version of those, these tools that will still be able to add value to the lives of our agencies and make them be able to perform effectively as well. But the difference is that they will now be paying in Naira as opposed to subscribing in Euro or USD. So I think this is food for thought for us, for all of us, uh, as far as this question goes. Steve, that was very, very useful. Um, yeah. And I take up, I will take up the challenge immediately. Sure, um, sure. We, we are thinking a lot about localization. Yeah. And this is where, um, Terragon's enterprise software, um, specifically the, the customer data platform comes in. Mm. Um, you talk about, you made some, you alluded to China being able to write an algorithm that will lock us out. Absolutely very, very valid points using the yeah. power of machine learning and stuff sure. like that. In this market today, 
borders are heightened. You and I have been here. We haven't been able to go anywhere. Uh -huh. We have an enterprise software tool that can go into every company. Those companies put in their customers' data where they, we, and they have, collected, they, have, they have received consent from those customers uh -huh. into this enterprise software tool. With that, we can enrich those profiles and tell them the behaviors of each of the people in that mm. enterprise software tool. That way, mm. we can have maybe 10 different, um, 10 different um, versions of mm. the creative that can sure. be sent out to different people. And mm. as we get real-time feedback, they will be in the organization yeah. looking at the screen and seeing real-time feedback on the adoption of each of these creatives. And that way, we can dynamically as well adjust how we are communicating with the customer. Um, Impressive. This is our own little way of localizing within the ecosystem, using the power mm. of data, using the power of artificial intelligence to push the boundaries of essentially to turbocharge, um, yeah. turbocharge the conversation around marketing, around mm. the use of technology in communicating for brands. Mm. Um, this is potentially very, very powerful tool, which um, you know, we, 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 are, we, are, we are trying to, we are trying to spearhead and, and take the leadership position on. I think, Elo, if I can ask, I think we, you need to speak more, especially to the triple i I look for an opportunity where the triple has a big gathering so that you can come and speak around this thing. Because you see, the, if, if we, the more people know about it, the more we can actually use it. Because we really, we, the industry needs help. We need, we need our people, we need our tech guys to now, this is the time for tech guys to come to the party and really, really help us propel. And because I know we can do it. I know. We, I know we can do it. It's not Absolutely. because of the shortage of the manpower or the brain power. So we just need to, to harmonize more. Fantastic. Um, Steve, it, it doesn't have to be a big gathering, please. It can be a very small gathering because I, I also have to build some following within the AAA organization. Sure, sure. Trust, trust body. So it can yes. be a small workshop with the tech committee. Okay, all right. all right. All right, sure. Please, it doesn't have to be a big one. Um, right, okay. Steve, one more question. Um, we have a number of questions, but I'll just take one more because in the, in the, due to time. Yes. Um, this, this says, how do indigenous businesses or how can indigenous businesses managed by owners, in mm. bracket, Igbo trading system, utilize mm. the new way of marketing via technology? Well, interesting. Uh, honestly, if you look at, I'm a big, big fan of the Igbo uh, trading system, you know, the apprenticeship scheme. Honestly, yes. if, if I have anything to do with power in this country in the, in the future, that's the first thing I'm going to adopt. Because see, look at the, the, this, the let's go back to history. Yeah, and I know they've canceled history in school, so most of the young people don't even know the history of this country, you know, which is sad. But look at the history. A, a whole generation of people from a certain group of this country, there was war, a lot of people died. Uh, businesses were forfeited and lost. They came back. They had maybe 20 pounds or something. I don't know how much everybody was given. I, I don't know accurately how much it is now. But they, they built it back. And now they are at the heart of commerce in Nigeria again today. Please, a round of applause for my Igbo brothers and sisters. Because see, it's not easy. It's not, it's not, it's not easy. It takes a level of a perfect, and it's not about individual thing. It's, a, it's about a system of apprenticeship that makes you say, okay, you take this guy from the village, bring him to the business, he finishes his apprenticeship, you set him up in business, he takes another person. You create wealth, you, you're creating wealth. So now, to the issue of overlaying of technology, that is just the, 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 the part. Maybe, and that's why you find that, maybe it's just for the guys in Nigeria. Maybe it's for the Omata guy, and the other guys in Alaba, and maybe for a chunk of them. Because you see, the Igbo businessman also is one of the most traveled people in this country. Almost everywhere, soaking up things. They, you, you'll be shocked. The guy's English, he might be missing his syntaxes and his tenses, but I promise you, he's also very savvy because of his worldview is way more open. So what I would say is that, look, we have to develop tech for local, local tech which is where this, the stuff we talked about is how do we localize some of these things? Because for the average uh, uh, Omata guy, you are telling him one long English, and he wants to see how does this thing help me make, move from 10 Naira to 15 Naira. That's what he's interested in. How do you 
speak a local tech language? How do you codify the language of tech into our local language that they can understand? Because that's what they trust. Anything sounding too English and too high polluting, you want to bring all of those MBA from uh, well, for that to your school. It's not working. So you have, to break, you have to break it down to the level. So the most important step to take is how to localize tech. Fantastic, fantastic. You think that um, all of the time, yeah, you think all of the Chinese people are graduates. No, there are a lot of Chinese <laughs> people who are, as far as book education is concerned, are illiterate. But because the, the, tech, the tech was codified in their own language, it's accessible to more people. And that's what I'll say. Super useful. Very, very useful insights. Yeah. Um, Steve, yeah. I couldn't um, thank you enough. Thank um, you so much, Eno. Deeply appreciate the time you spent with us this morning. Thank you very um, much. We have, I'm sure the audience have gotten um, a lot of insights from this. Um, it's been very, very useful. We deeply, deeply appreciate it. Thank you. And, thank um, you so much. Thanks. Thank you very, very much. Thank um, to the audience, thank you very much for finding thank you guys um, to be with us this morning. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, we will be in touch with you. Um, I think there's going to be um, a feedback form um, so they can share some insights so that we can continue to improve this. Um, thanks very much, guys, and um, I appreciate um, your questions. We couldn't take all of them, um, but um, we definitely would. Um, get maybe Steve to respond to them and we'll send you um, responses. Thank you very much. All. Thank you. Yeah. Bye for now. Thanks, Steve. Bye. Bye.